Junior, yes. why'd you bring a California gas can? Only California could screw up a gas can. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Zach. Morning. It's Monday morning. We're actually going to go chase a lead that Zach's dad found in Waco, Texas. So what's significant about Waco to you, Zach? Not much. I just oh, come there. on. So anyway, we've got a really cool, eclectic group of European cars we're going to go chase. Rolls Royce, Bentley, Jaguar, and Mercedes. Total package is about 20 vehicles, so grab your pot of coffee, your cup of joe, and let's go. So we're in day one of the buy. Uh, we've been here for about four hours. Uh, we started with 22 cars we're trying to buy on a package. We hoped we were gonna get them all. We didn't. We got 14, but we did get the ones I really, really wanted. I'm just gonna show you a quick teaser on the two of my favorites. 1973 Corniche Rolls Royce. Hard top, not a drop head. Body by H.J. Mulliner, Park Ward. We'll get into more details in this car later, but it is really a cool car. Here's something you very rarely see, especially one down on its knees, because this was one of the most expensive cars in the world, built in 1971. Yes, it's a 600 series Mercedes limo. It was sold new at Stevenson's Motor Company in Dallas, Texas. Check this out. Now there are multiple iterations of this car. This is not the Pullman, which would be an extended wheelbase car. And it's not the Landellette, I'm sure which it was. But if you pull up at the back of one of these and you see 600 on the back, you know that that was one of the most expensive cars in the world and certainly one of the most expensive Mercedes in the world. I have a good idea what's gonna happen to this car, but we'll talk about that more later. We've got a lot to do. Again, this is day one, there are gonna be two more days. Well, my new Manscaped 4.0 performance package has arrived. So I'm familiar with this product because I actually use it. So once you get this, you get all your literature on how it works and what it's called. So you've got your lawnmower 4.0 right there. You got your weed whacker, which I use on a daily basis. A pair of boxers. You got your travel bag. So here's your lawnmower. Just drop it right in there. And the bars will show you, look, this is already charged. You know, I'm a lawnmower. It's got light. It also works underwater. If you're gonna travel with this and you're just chucking the travel bag, you don't want the battery to wear out, hit it three times. It's in travel mode. So now manscaping is something you should do on a regular basis to keep yourself tight. It's not something you just have to do on special occasions. 360 blade works really nice. I use this all the time. Now we're gonna grab a lawnmower. I use this to tighten this area up here. Honey, you out there? So one thing that I tend to have a lot of is this unsightly gray hair on my neck. All right, we're thinning the party for her. It's getting thinner. You go to manscaped.com and use promo code COFFEEWALK. You're gonna get 20% off. You get free shipping and two free gifts. So, almost there. Party for is better. Ears are better. Nose is better. Manscaped.com. Good morning, team. It's day two of what we're gonna call the Olympic buy. Why? Because the guy's name is Bob Richards, well-known Olympian. He was the first man on the Wheaties box in 1958. He had a really cool eclectic taste in cars. What he liked were cars that were very rare, low production, and expensive when new. So it's gonna take us two days to go load these. We got 14 of them bought. The, some of the highlights are ones we're picking up today that I really, really like, 73 Corniche which from 71 to 73, it's a hard top, not a drop head like we're used to, though I made like 100 a year. A 600 short wheelbase Mercedes limo, 1972. I made 120 a year. 
and this one ought to get y'all smiling, a 1983 Zimmer. <laughs> Built on a Fox body Mustang chassis, one of about 75 a year. We've got some really neat stuff. It's basically Mercedes, Rolls Royce, Bentleys, and Jaguars. Okay, so we all got our cups of Joe. Thank you guys for being here so early. It is 4 a.m. Why are we here at 4 a.m.? Because it is incredibly hot in Texas right now. Yep. So I looked at the swing today. We're going to go from 79 degrees all the way to 107, which the feel like temperature is 119. Great. So hopefully let's try to get in to the location about around 6. Sun up is 639, James. Need you to get the forklift off the trailer because some of these are going to require a lot of horsepower. Try to get them all on there before it gets too hot. Now we've got Alex and Junior here. We got one that's gonna be really, really tough. Alex and I have messed with two of these 6.3 series cars before with the air ride suspension, dead batteries, suspension goes down, brakes lock up, on and on and on. So that'll be interesting. That one's gonna go on Steve's trailer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got four rigs today. You'll go out front, you'll see three with the lights on because those are the Rams. Steve's a Chevrolet man. <laughs> right, we got our cup of Joe. You guys hang with us today, it's gonna be a great day. So we're at the golf course in Waco, Texas. It's 6.15 in the morning. We made it before sunrise, which I believe sunrise is about 6.45. We've got four rigs here. Uh, we're gonna try to get a couple of these loaded before the golfers show up and get on the parking lot. First one on the trailer. Fortunately, the air ride is not all the way down, so it looks like we're gonna be able to winch it on the trailer. We brought the truck battery for it, but you gotta get it running to get the air pump running. It's kind of complicated how they get these cars up in the air. This is a 1972 short wheelbase Mercedes 600 series limo. So this is the most common one. These were made from 70 all the way to 81. They made 2,669 of them. 2,100 of them were this series, which is the four door. Not extended wheelbase, not a Pullman and not a Landolette. So we're gonna post pictures of those, but this is the one that celebrities most commonly wanted and royalty wanted. There was 2,100 of them. So you basically had a driver and you sat in the back seat in the style, had a bunch of room here in the back. The next one from here was the long wheelbase limousine, which had a center section. Then the next step from that was a six door. Then if you were really a baller, the most expensive one was a center section Landellette, which the top folded back. Really happy to have this car. This car was actually sold new at Stevenson's in Dallas. So this is the first one we're gonna get on the trailer. And then we're gonna go fight some of the lower end ones to get that on the trailer and get these two out of here and start fighting the uh, Rolls Royce and Bentleys. So what else is significant about this car is it's complete and it hadn't been modified. A lot of these cars have been modified and a lot of them are not complete. This one was running when it was parked. Uh, this is the air pump system over here I was referring to that runs the suspension. But this is the world famous 6.3 liter 600 series motor. 250 horsepower, like 350 foot-pounds of torque. And again, this was one of the most expensive cars in the world from 70 to 81 when you ordered them. And they only made about 120 of these a year for the world market. So this is one of the 14 that came in the package. It's around a 2000 S-Series four-door sedan Jaguar. This will go to Nevada. So this will be one of the ones for the next Nevada sale. There's your lead-in for it. Our next sale is probably not going to have 200 cars, it's probably going to have about 100. Next we've got a 1999 F350 extended cab work truck. Some kind of a dump box on the back, obviously a dually. It is a gas powered V8 with 160,000 miles. This one's headed straight out to Nevada, It'll be for the next sale, unless you need it. If you need it, it's at social at cbjeep.com. It did. All right, you want me to fire it up? All right, hit it. Well, that sounds good. No fuel. The wipers were good. They all turn off. <laughs> well, we know the motor's good, but. I don't know how we're going to get it out of here. Seems to be a tractor in the way. Well, it was worth a try.
1983 Zimmer. They made it from 1980 to 1988. They made roughly 1,344 of them during those years. They were very expensive. This particular one is a Golden Spirit. It's based on the Fox Body Mustang chassis. So again, that's, they made approximately 75 of these a year. The company lost a tremendous amount of money building these, so they cost a lot more to build than they actually sold for. Uh, obviously, you don't see them very often. There's only 75 a year, but again, with this guy's theme, he bought very low production, unique vehicles. Look good there, Alex. <laughs> so under the hood, this is 83, it would have been a five liter HO. Uh, we looked at it back there. I don't know where the hood release is on the Zimmer. All right, so it appears to be stock HO under the hood, right? Yeah. Because this year was the Holly four barrel performance valve covers. Again, we had this run in a few minutes ago, starting fluid, it sounded good. So this just literally is a Fox body Mustang. They cut, stretched, and did all these modifications to. Yeah. How's that for a ton of work? I would think it would overheat too. That might be why they didn't make any money. Yeah. It took too long to build them. 1973 Rolls Royce Corniche Series 1. Coupe, some people call it a two-door saloon. They also came in a drophead version. They made these all the way from 1971 to 81. But the very first series was 71 to 73. There was about 1,188 of them built over a 10 year period, but only 100 per year. There was only approximately 100 of the 1973s. That was left hand and right hand drive. We put the battery in this car, the windows go up and down. It's low mileage. Actually, it looks like it's going to clean up. The seats aren't ripped, they're not torn. What are the miles in this one, James? Uh, this one is 47,768. Uh, 47,000 47, mile car, and again, it's an HJ Mulder, park word body. Nice, clean, solid Texas car. A rare find. This is one of the better ones in the group. That's a good sign. All right. <laughs> And it rolls, it rolls, it rolls. Right, Junior? Yeah, it rolls. <laughs> We're gonna turn the key off. As so you see there, the build date's July of 72. This is titled as a 73 in the US. It could technically be a 72, but the 71 to 73s are all series ones. 1991 Bentley Mulsane S. Brandon drove when he parked in this spot. It's got 45,000 miles on it. The interior's clean. Next one on the trailer. It's 8 a.m. and we got five big tough cars loaded on the trailer, strapped down, two more to go. The next one is going on the trailer. They got it running before I even walked over there, so it must be a good running and driving car. It's a blue on blue 1979 Rolls Royce Silver Ray. Two. Nineteen ninety-five Mercedes S six hundred coupe, twelve cylinder car. It's one of my favorite cars in the bunch. Sixty thousand miles. These things look great with a wide body kit, and BBS wheels. What do you think, Alex? It's my daily. It runs and drives. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the last one we're going to load today. I'm going to go inside and do some paperwork uh, with the son that's running the estate, and we'll be back out on our way back to Wiley. Back at it again in the morning at four for seven more. So let me look at the miles real quick on this. 64,000 miles. Morning, Sean P. Morning, James. Good morning, morning, Dennis. Morning, Junior. Good morning, Dennis. Sean, welcome to day three of the Bob Richards Estate Rescue. That's all be fun. It's going to be fantastic. So we started with 14 cars. Yesterday, we were supposed to get seven, which I thought we got seven yesterday. We actually got eight. Nice. So today, we're going to go after six cars that are on this ranch, and you're not going to believe what's on this ranch. I could probably believe. Three Rolls Royce, three Bentleys. Which means they're probably bricks. No, some <laughs> might be, maybe, maybe not. So y'all grab your cup of joe, let's go for day three. Okay, it's 6.20 in the morning. Uh, again, we're trying to get this done before it gets too hot. There's six cars here on the ranch. Three Rolls Royces, three Bentleys. 
Let's look at the most expensive one first. We're hoping to get at least three of these running because the trees are so low back here we can't get the rigs in here. But this is a 2002 Arnage that Rain, supposedly Raiden drove recently. We had pictures of it in the garage like a year ago. Uh, these cars, the base price on this car was $199,990. You could get them optioned all the way up to $228,000. It looks like a nice car, but hopefully this one will run and drive. So the plan is, James, is to hopefully and Junior get at least three of these running and driving. Yes, sir. We'll try for all six. That battery don't look too bad. One of 20, so. That's a good sign. Yeah, what's that one over there? 20. 20 as well. So both the batteries are done in 20. I didn't bring any battery packs, but we brought actual batteries. The car's got two batteries. Look at the tool Let's can. Those. That's crazy, right? It's running. He said at one time this is one of the nicer cars. It unfortunately got hailed on, but it's white on white. What a beautiful car. Did you break it, Sean P? How many miles is it showing? 30,000. 30, I believe that's correct. Look at that pretty that is. So this is an 89 Rolls Royce Silver Spur white on white. I love white on white cars with red trim. It's been held on, but I imagine somebody will fix this car. Let's get her going, Sean, on the trailer. Well, we got to unbury this one. Pretty sure we're going to be the only people in the world today rescuing three Rolls Royces and three Bentleys. What do you think, James? Think anybody else is doing that? No, sir. At 6.20 in the morning? No, sir. <laughs> and we left again at 4 o'clock. Seventy-eight thousand miles. This is one of the higher mileage ones. Wow. So the oil was changed in this eleven twenty of eleven in McKinney, Texas, which is pretty close to our shop. And now it's here in Waco. It's had almost no miles put on it, and the battery in the back is twenty twenty three, so it had to run recently. Last inspecting fifteen, so. My hope is the Arnage, the Silver Spur, and this car are all going to drive on the trailer. Fire in the hall. Systems checking. Let me let it roll for a minute. 55,410 miles. This car looks like it would clean up. Hopefully it'll start. It's running through all kinds of systems checks on the dash. We'll let that finish up. Done. <laughs> So I just did something on accident. Why? Because I've never actually started an Arnage of this year. You turn the key all the way to the right, the systems go through, and you turn it to the left and it starts. No kidding. Well, that was totally by accident. <laughs> it's running, sounds good. Make it easier to load, won't it, James, for running and driving? <laughs> Come on with it, let's get out in the street. Okay. and driving. What a work of art. Again, these cars could have been optioned from the factory new in 2002 as high as 228,000 bucks. Gauges are all working. AC's blowing cold. The start sequence is odd. It took me a minute to figure it out, but I got it figured out. So I think this 2002 or not is going to be the first one on the trailer. Can't wait to see this cleaned up. Sunroof. This looks like a high option one. The Silver Silver Spur is running. It sounds good. Again, we bought all these as non-running cars. Uh, the estate didn't want to work on them. I understand why, because they can be quite expensive and can tankers. It would be fantastic if three of them were running, because it sure make them easier to load. Outstanding, Junior. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead and bring it out front. If you're not shy, let it rip. Look at that, a Silver Silver Spur. I believe that was an 89. That's a great bombmobile. <laughs> Look at that. 
That is a huge surprise when we get these things running. That is outstanding. Maybe the key has Turn the key on and punch it. Turn the key on, now, now press it. Pressing it. Hello? It's not working, James. Okay. You sure it says fuel? Uh, it's got a gas, it's got a gas uh, pump on it, so I would assume. Never assume anything, James. You know what they say about assume, sir. I know. I bet there's an emergency release in here. Watch this. Anybody ready for this? Boom! <laughs> so one? if you're looking here, there's an emergency release. If the power one's not working, open the fuel door. So we're going to have to learn these cars. So this is a 97 Silver Spur. Obviously white. What's great about these cars, they're all Texas cars. James, I got that open for you. Sweet, thank you. <laughs> How's that drive, Junior? Drives like a should. Like it should? <laughs> like a hovercraft? Yeah. <laughs> like a boat? Right. Yeah, and a flew right. <laughs> Put the whole family in there, go to church. That was a nice brake squeal at the end of the driveway, too. Uh, the brakes are kind of soft. Kinda? Yeah. Oh, you'd be soft, too. You'd be sitting right there. <laughs> Now our hope is we get some fuel in this one because it shows to be completely out. Battery's up, motor turns over, and I'm hoping once it starts, the air ride will come up. Because if it doesn't, it's going to be hard to get on the trailer. It's, it, I mean, it's going to be hard for James to get on the trailer. It's always hard for me. Junior, yeah. why'd you bring a California gas can? <laughs> Only California could screw up a gas can. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a 1989 Silver Spur II, and the son of the previous owner said this was his favorite car. He helped his dad maintain them. He said this was one of the cleanest cars, nicest interior, and one of his favorite ones to drive. Uh, Sean P put a battery in it, put fuel in it. It's now running. Beautiful interior, so this will be the third one on the trailer. Good luck, Sean P. Got it. That is a success. I really thought this was going to take us hours upon hours to get these out. That's why we brought the forklift and all these guys. Uh, his son said these cars all ran and drove when they're parked, and that is exciting now that we have 14 cars. Leads me to believe we ought to be able to get them all running and driving. So it's alive, he's got it running on starting fluid and priming, so we know the motor's good, that's a positive. While we were loading the third rolls over there, they got this car running just on starting fluid, so James was walking next to the car, putting starting fluid in while Junior was driving it in gear, so they got it from there to here. So now we're gonna see how talented they are, if they can do it again and get it on the trailer. If not, we'll winch it on. I don't know, Sean, is this a good idea or a bad idea? Bad idea. It's a great idea. Sean thinks it's a great idea, which means it's a really bad idea. Hey, man. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Run, Forrest, run! Fred? Turn, monkey, turn! <laughs> you ready? That's it. She done. <laughs> it worked that far. Ooh wee. That's too much either. At least they saved us from pushing, pulling, or dragging it from there. So now it's here. We'll winch it up, get this one on. That'll be four on and two to go. <laughs> All right, team. Outstanding. Four on the trailer, three drove on, one sort of did. I don't That's, know what you're talking about. This one's right here. We should be able to pull it right out. I think Paula's not one of them. What? So th now there's two left. Huh? Yeah. And that's not one of them. Let me show you where it is. You won't believe it. Easter egg, huh? <laughs> you literally are not going to believe this. <laughs> and no it was way. driven back here. It was a running and driving car just like these. Okay. And they decided to put it back here before they had built the overhang on that to protect it a little bit. But. 
Anybody see it yet? Yeah, this is this has snakes written all over it. <laughs> huh. So I believe what's back there. And you can see huh. the Bentley. And you can see the red label on the Bentley. I believe this is a black 91 Turbo R. I have not been back there. Huh. But I did buy it. Huh. So question is, do we cut that down and reveal it? Yeah, or we yeah. try to get it get it running and just drive over? No, because we gotta pull that out. Like I said, that's snake heaven right there. <laughs> Alright, well get it, Jaime. Sean P, that was an expensive car back in the day. Even in 91, this car was north of 200 grand. Well north of 200. I wonder what the gross weight is on that. A lot. <laughs> we can look at the door. They're a floating cloud, aren't they? These cars are actually pretty fast. Oh. Driven. These are supposed to be driven. I got my gloves on just in case they need help. Here you go, James. We got something for you. I come on, hurry. We you think you're cute. Pimp. 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 So here's the issue, we don't have any keys. The brakes are locked and you gotta have the battery in it with the keys to get it in neutral. So we drug it forward so we can pick it up from the side. <laughs> really? That way we can load it. Got my attention for sure. Come on in here. Last but not least, 1996 Bentley Brooklyn in a very British color combination. Dark British racing green. Look at that biscuit interior with green piping and a green dash. What a stunning car. I don't know what the miles are because the battery's dead. This is our last one of the day. This makes car number 14. What an amazing find. I don't know if you guys are hungry, but I sure am. Let's go eat. We're at George's in Waco, Texas. Why? Why? Because Zach is from Waco. He recommended it. He said, this is the place to eat. Hope it's good. Let's go eat. Okay, Migas with chorizo, hash browns, and grits. All right, James. You want to learn something today? Did yes, you sir. Know? Grits are gluten-free. How's that? Those are made out of corn. <laughs> I'm learning all kinds of new things. Wow. Potatoes are gluten free. Why do I know this? Why? I don't know. <laughs> when did you go gluten free? <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> He's working on it. All I need is a fork. <laughs> they would have got tortilla chips and amigas. He's a free. Work in progress. All right. <laughs> so again, Zach said George is the place to be and it looks great. And I am hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going best pie right in the middle. It's got to have salsa on it. I'll be right back. Do y'all need anything else, guys? Tabasco, more salsa, or anything? More salsa would be fantastic. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. Wow. Really, really good. And this is three eggs scrambled. That looks really good. That's got to be best pie. Is it big enough, James? No. Nah. I think it is. Ah. Love it. James, what'd you get? Big old burrito that with sausage old and burrito. gravy. Wow. Sean, what'd you get? Uh, just flapjacks. What's a flapjack? <laughs> Junior, what'd you get? Big old hash brown. Pancakes. Something like that. <laughs> he got the potato hash. Potato hash. A little bit of potato warning, potato the, sal potato the salsa hash. here is hot. Is it? Then yes, sir. 
like a tension getting hot. Wow. You're gonna like it, James. I like spicy. Or it might be the jalapenos. Look at that. A big, big old Hallie right there. That might be what it is. Yeah, That's I think it's the jalapeno, not the salsa. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the jalapenos. <laughs> It has a spot. I'm hungry. I might have to have two of these. Zach, what'd you get? Same as you. I don't know. Great minds think alike, sir. Gravy. How about some salsa? <laughs> Sounds great. There you go, sir. Thank you, sir. That looks good inside. Let's see your best bite. Wait a minute. You just did gravy and salsa? Oh, yep. Yeah. I'm going crazy today. Get the best bite right out of the middle of that, dude. Right here? This is a good one because it's got jalapenos and everything in it. So Zach's two favorite foods, and I actually confirmed this with his mom the other day, are in fact burritos and macaroni and cheese. <laughs> That's why he's called Zacaroni and Cheese. That's right. Is it good? It is good. That's really correct. Good. That's why we call him Zacaroni. Zacaroni and Cheese. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. So Sean, you got a flapjack. Is that the same thing as a pancake? It is a pancake. <laughs> Okay. You've never heard of flapjack. I think that's what they call it in Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota. I think it's more of a country thing. You think? Flapjack. What is it then? Somebody please answer. Yeah, yeah. Junior, what did you get? Big old hash? Yeah. You good? Yeah, it's good. All right. I like this place. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's bright. Ah. Well, I can see why that's a local favorite. It's good, huh, Shafi? Really good. I'm full. I liked it. You like it, James? It was really good. Junior? It was good. All right. George's is great if you're in Waco. As always, please like, tag, share, and follow. And most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next week. He's no Russian. He's the vaulting vicar. Clean-shaven, clean-living Reverend Bob Richards, a gold medalist in the pole vault and a self-appointed goodwill ambassador. I hugged Russians and I did everything in my power to try to live the Baron de Coubertin Olympic ideology. Peace through sports. Now we couldn't talk. As I recall, I knew one Russian word, Horosho, which means very good or wonderful. Or, well, I'd, every time the Russians would jump, I'd say, Horosho. And every time I jumped, they'd say, good, beautiful. And wouldn't it be something if a simple little hug or a handshake or a Horosho or a beautiful Buddha? Wouldn't it be something if that's what it took to save mankind?